Hello everyone, welcome back to another Doctor Who figure review. In today's Doctor Who figure review, we're taking a look at the Sixth Doctor and TARDIS from the stage play, The Ultimate Adventure. This is a very exciting set, as for many years we've been told we could never get the Sixth Doctor in B&M. Well, this year we have it. To celebrate 15 years since the Sixth Doctor figure was released back in 2008, we've got this lovely set to commemorate it. So the way this video is going to work is we're going to take a look at the packaging, take a look at the articulation detail for the Sixth Doctor, take a look at the TARDIS and then we'll do a comparison to the other 1980s TARDIS toy props that we have in our collections. So let's dive into the packaging. Take a look at the packaging for the Sixth Doctor and TARDIS from The Ultimate Adventure. So we've got the new style guide packaging, Doctor Who there, this lovely golden vortex there which is the sixth doctor sort of brand color and that really does work for this and the necros daleks there's something quite uh, visually striking about it the sixth doctor the tardis limited edition featuring the sixth doctor and tardis for scale of figures um exactly the same sort of box sort of deal as the david bradley one still not a fan uh, because you can see the figure is still exposed and i don't know if you can see on camera but we'll take a closer look you can see there's been a bit of paint rub on the the eyebrow, um, which obviously wouldn't happen if this was sort of sealed. I get that we're trying to go for sort of plastic free, um, but yeah, I can't say I'm a fan of the sort of a TARDIS set. Being sort of exposed to the elements on a shop floor, especially in B&M. Um, so we've got the side there, so you can see the TARDIS, um, again, featuring the Sip Doctor. And then we have a bit of bio on the Sip Doctor, which has got some really nice little Easter eggs about the Sip Doctor there, like Evelyn Smythe, and even a nice little callback to Frobisher, which is very cool. So here is the Sixth Doctor in all his stage play glory. So we'll take a look at the articulation, then the detail, and we'll do a little lineup of the Sixth Doctor figures as well. So let's take a look at the articulation. Articulation wise for the Sixth Doctor, the head can move side to side. Probably can do a full 360, but it's kind of hindered by the collar. The arms can do a full 360 degree turn. 360 at the bicep. Bend at the elbow, we do have wrist swivel but is hindered by the cuffs and we do have waist articulation ever so slightly but again is hindered by the coat. The legs can kick out and move to the side but again slightly hindered by the coat. 360 at the thigh and of course bend at the knee. Moving on to the detail for the sixth Doctor figure, now one thing you'll notice straight away is that the head and the hands haven't been painted. Um, I guess that this is a sort of a cost-cutting measure. Um, so if I bring in a normal sick talk, you can see that it, it looks all right in isolation, but when you have the other figures, it kind of does sort of stick out like a sore thumb. Because I, I think the paint apps, especially on sort of the lips, seem to sort of be lost really, um, and sort of there's no sort of definition there. Um, so yeah, it's I guess I can understand why they haven't painted sort of the the head and the hands because just look how intricate this costume is. Um, and I think maybe as well the packaging with this figure being out in sort of exposed you can see that there's a little bit of paint rub missing from his sort of eyebrow which is a little bit of annoying so you don't know if that's done from the packaging or just because the head hasn't been painted so the paint um, hasn't stuck right to the figure. Um, but in terms of paint apps on the head sculpt, the head sculpt's done very nice, got this sort of dark sort of um, a brown base coat with a blonde wash over to really help accentuate sort of the blonde curls of Colin Baker and that really highlights sort of the curls, so you can see sort of the individual curl strands and all the details to give out lifelike effect, which is done very nicely. And it is very striking on this figure, and it does sort of have more of an element of colour, which makes it pop. Um, I guess because the sort of head sculpt um, hasn't been painted, you can see sort of more of the raw details, such as the lines there on the face and the slight sort of lines on the forehead which is very nice the paint apps are quite crisp on the eyes um you know that vibrant blue popping um but if we take a look at the costume which again you know considering that colin baker was sort of that one of those figures where because how intricate the costume is it just wouldn't be allowed in a bnm budget and here we are um getting sort of maybe a little bit simplified but i think that they have matched the ultimate adventure colin baker very well um, we've got this lovely vibrant purple. One thing to note is they are missing the cat badge, which is, you know, quite an integral part of, you know, the Sick Doctor's costume. Um, you can see that there has been a bit of simplified detailing with sort of the no polka dots on the cravat. Um, we do have the question marks on the shirt, which have been replicated very nicely. And then we have this lovely 80s sort of waistcoat. 
um, with this nice sort of stripe detailing with the gold buttons and it's nice to see the sort of uh, sort of fob watch chain be painted because I think that would have been probably a way of sort of cutting costs because it's just a, a, a minute um, amount of paint on the figure but it's great to see that it's been there. There's a little bit of paint bleed I think there um, but I guess that's to be expected um, but if we look at the actual costume we've got this nice sort of check red design which I guess is very in keeping to the Sick Doctor's TV um, costume. Again that's moved on the inside sleeves as well um, which is replicated very nicely. Um, we have this lovely crosshatch detailing which doesn't have any sort of paint bleeds, there's not been any sort of paint bleeds across there which is replicated very nicely and that's a, again on the cuffs of the jacket and the pocket and again on the sort of fastening of the coat there which is again very nicely done. Um, what else have we got in terms of detail? So we have again the nice sort of simplified design um, with sort of the panelling there, nice sort of creasing detail to give that lifelike effect. You can see all the little colours there, the pink there, that sort of minute bit there. Um, again the purples, it's just a very visually striking figure, the blue and of course we do have the blue lining of the coat. Um, yeah, that is all very nicely done. Um, yeah, really nice. So if we move to the trousers you can see that they're not your standard Sick Doctor trousers. You've got this sort of black line and then a very faint sort of grey line there. Again, paint apps have been applied pretty well. If we bring in the standard Sick Doctor trousers you can see the difference in how sort of the lines are. Um, that they aren't as close together. Maybe this is just sort of a simplified version just to give the illusion that they are fully there. Then we have the brown shoes with the little white detailing on the sole, um, which is accurate because if we have the standard Sick Doctor shoes there, you can see um, the differences. Again, we have the creasing detail to give it um, that lifelike effect. But I have to say, this is a really nice um, variant of the Sick Doctor, very nice or striking costume and the paint taps um, are very well executed for this. And yes, yeah, such a nice um, variant and again, a very colourful version. <laughs> so, speaking of colourful versions, let's take a look at all the Sixth Doctor figures in the character options lineup. And here we have the Sixth Doctor figure lineup. So this is the Wave 1 Colin, the Attack of the Cybermen one, the Toys R Us one, the Forbidden Planet Revelation of a Dalek set one, the Terror of the Vervoid 11 Doctor set, the 13 Doctors, Sixth Doctor, and then the Real Time Sixth Doctor, and then of course the Ultimate Adventure. You can see the difference having sort of the head and hands not being painted on this and one thing to note with this Sick Doctor figure is that they haven't painted the sort of cap badge which I guess is a sort of an iconic part of the Sick Doctor's costume um, but I guess because of cost reason it hasn't been included so you can see how the Sick Doctor figure has evolved over the years in the character options lineup you can see the paint apps have improved and of course you can see all the variants of the Sick Doctor and you can see that the Ultimate Adventure one definitely does stand out. It's quite nice to have sort of the sort of big finish sort of expanded media Sick Doctor figure in the line which is very nice having the big finish one and now the stage play. Moving on to the TARDIS now. Now this TARDIS isn't this prop what was used on the Ultimate Adventure. I'll put a photo on now. Yeah you can see why character options probably didn't want to go down that route. So we've got more of a sort of a, you know, a, a TARDIS what you see in the actual Sixth Doctor era and I have to say it is a very striking TARDIS. We'll do a sort of 80s TARDIS lineup in a minute. So let's take a look at the features. So feature wise um, we ha don't have the electronics. I think that this was rumoured to be electronic which would have been lovely to have an 80s box with sort of the flashing lamp. Um, but the only features this TARDIS does have is the opening doors which we should all know how to activate them um, you can see sort of the raw plastic what this TARDIS has been molded in and of course we have the square to shut the door so that's all very nice um, so let's take a look at the detail so the detailing we've got the nice sort of, uh, lamp detailing there with the sort of housing and um, we do have a load of washes to give this TARDIS this great sort of um, worn and battered look so we've got this sort of black wash over to really highlight sort of the wood grain and Artex look there and we've given sort of a light sort of um, whitewash as well you can see sort of give that sort of where the paint sort of thinning and sort of chipping away um, which is really lovely um, and I think that really helps accentuate the detailing of sort of the wood grain and the Artex 
and sort of the way sort of the black wash has got caught in some sort of of the elements of the wood grain um, to really help accentuate that. Of course, we have these lovely windows, which again have been given a black wash to give that sort of uh, sort of pebbling effect there, and they've been given this sort of um, orangey sort of wash to give sort of how sort of faded and worn the perspex is on the actual windows. That's done very nicely. We've got a black wash on the sign there to give that sort of grimy look and also we do have the white wash there which you can see sort of the wear and tear of the actual prop again really helps accentuate the wood grain and the artex detail you can see where the sort of black wash has sort of been lining um, there it really has that nice sort of worn battered look you can see how sort of that white wash really sort of gives it that sort of um, sort of paint chipped look which again is really nice sort of black wash is a little bit heavy there um, but I think that works rather well um, because it just replicates how the actual prop was in the show. Again, you can see sort of that nice sort of white wash there to give that sort of um, more sort of worn and um, tatty look, which this prop is very tatty. Again, black wash on the actual signs there, which again, very nice. Um, very much the same detailing um, with the same sort of washes, again, to help accentuate the wood grain and the Artex look. And of course, we do have where the battery compartment is and of course the speaker hole um, but yeah it would have been nice to have this electronic because it would be great to have um, an 80s TARDIS electronic but of course that would have been up the price again you can really see how that sort of white wash really sort of accentuates the detail it's just really well done and if we do a TARDIS lineup in a minute you can see how it stands up very well of course we do have the golden lock which it does it is very striking against this sort of very dark blue and the silver door handle um, but yeah very nice detailing overall to replicate the Sick Doctor's TARDIS in his ear and it really does look like a, a battered um, prop doesn't it it's a really nice little replica of the Sick Doctor's TARDIS so let's take a look at the other 80s TARDISes so here we have some of the other 80s boxes. So we've got the Visitation box from 2020, the Caves of Androzani TARDIS, the new Sixth Doctor one, and then the Forbidden Planet 7th Doctor TARDIS. So you can see how much of a darker blue it is compared to the other 5th Doctor boxes. So you can see how striking the sort of worn and sort of orangey tinted windows are. Um, but yeah, you can really see how that weathering and sort of paint taps have been applied to really show how, what state this prop is in. Um, but yeah, I think they've gone all out on the paint taps, which is really lovely to give that a nice sort of worn and battered look. And it definitely does feel like it belongs in 1980s Doctor Who. So yeah, it, it's I, I'm quite shocked how the different it is to, um, you know, the standard fifth Doctor TARDIS. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm generally quite shocked. Um, and then I guess this TARDIS can double up as sort of a Logopolis TARDIS with sort of the orangey... Um, windows this is against the Androzani one um, again this has more of a brown wash whereas this has all the washes and of course um, we have the vibrant bright blue seventh Doctor TARDIS there so yeah you can really see um, all this sort of how B&M sort of improved the paint apps on these TARDISes to reflect the actual state of the prop so that is the classic TARDIS lineup so what are my overall thoughts on the Sixth Doctor and TARDIS from the Ultimate Adventure? Well, I really like it. I think that this is a really special set. Of course, it says special edition there. And I think that this is a special way of celebrating 15 years of the Sixth Doctor figure being in the line. I think that this is definitely worth the wait for Sixth Doctor fans. And I think having such a wild card release, and I think that this is something character options should do in the future, embrace sort of the expanded media like we have with the eighth doctor in this or comic book look and you know the big finish safe doctor looks and i think we should sort of embrace that um a little bit more a bit more oddity adds a little bit more variety to the shelf and i think that this is a very nice striking sick doctor you know the paint taps are you know nice crisp and clean you know i'm a little bit undecided about the head and hands not being painted the hands not so much but i think the head it's a little bit odd, I think, that especially when you compare it to the other figures, it does sort of stand out. It's a little bit like the Series 3 figures where they had that weird waxy um, finish to them. Um, whether it's a cost-cutting reason because of just, just this costume. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice Sick Doctor variant and the TARDIS is stunning. 
I, I think each year B&M find a new way or character find a new way of surprising us with TARDIS because we feel like we've exhausted the Doctor and, Do Doctor and TARDIS line um, but they always find new ways of surprising us and I think that this is a great little addition and something a nice Doctor Who figure oddity I think that's the best way to describe this set so it gets a massive thumbs up from me I adore it. I think that this is possibly my favorite maybe maybe it's my favorite set of the year I don't know um, but I really do like this set um, but yeah that has been the review of the Sixth Doctor and the Ultimate Adventure TARDIS. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe because it really does help the channel out. There's a review of the Revelation of a Dalek set out now. And of course, I'll be reviewing the Five Doctors, Death Zone, um, Dalek and Richard Turnall figure next. So thank you very much for watching this review and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.